Ciao Juventini of the world, my name is Giuseppe, welcome back on the channel, I hope you are doing well. One day after the crucial win of Juventus versus Sassuolo 2-1, a really great and beautiful Sassuolo that gave a lot of difficulties to Juventus, but yesterday it was crucial to go and to win in Sassuolo in the Mape Stadium to secure that top 4. Mathematically it is not secure yet, but yesterday was an important one and Juventus did it. We will divide the video in three parts today, the first part is the tactical analyze of yesterday why did Juventus perform that badly but how did they also win so if you are interested in tactics remain on the channel especially after the intro if you want to know what the people are saying what the front pages are saying about our beloved Juventus and we will love a bit with Gazzetta dello Sport of course remain there for the middle of the video and if you want to know about Mercato remain in the last part of the videos with two big names Frenkie de Jong the player of uh, Barcelona that is divorcing he's on the market Market. Will he be able to go to Juventus? We will speak about that. And then Angel Di Maria, closer and closer to be the first big player that will join Juventus for 22-23. A bit more easy with yesterday. Yesterday win versus Sassuolo. So prepare yourself for a longer video. Put a maximum of like. Subscribe to the channel. We go after the intro. We start opening Tutto Sport, super important to open because they start with a really important message. Joya Juve, happiness Juve, because I know that yesterday we did a terrible, really horrific performance. This is correct, this is true, but is a Juventino happy that we won yesterday? Absolutely yes. There is nothing that makes me more angry on social media, on Instagram and so on, when people are watching my game reaction, when they are telling me, Beppe, did we win the Champions League? Or we, did we play versus Barcelona and so on and so on? Because yes, yesterday we won the Champions League. Probably not the true that tonight the semi-final will be played versus Manchester City and Real Madrid but we won probably the qualification to next Champions League if Juventus want to build and really with strong players it was crucial and vital to win yesterday to secure that top four otherwise it would have been a disaster losing yesterday would have been a disaster so yes I am celebrating more than ever because yesterday people don't realize that goal of Moise Ken at the 88th minute how important it was they are also saying ieri, oggi e domani, ieri, yesterday with Paolo Dybala. Eh, Dybala, not a beautiful performance uh, for him, even if he scored. Moisken that scored today, but the tomorrow is probably Raspadori that did a really amazing game. We will also see some heat maps of Raspadori and another player that made me fall in love yesterday. I say it up, open. Hopefully, I say it publicly, I fell in love for a player of Sassuolo and it is not Raspadori. Ken porta la Juve a meno uno dal terzo posto. Ken is bringing Juventus at minus one of the third spot. And guys, probably if Juventus and Tutto Sport is writing that the Juventini are happy, happiness, Juve, it's probably for that, for securing the top four, because we can't be happy about how we played. But the result, and this is super important, because today we are at plus eight over Roma, Fiorentina, Lazio, Atalanta, all these teams, plus eight with 12 points to go uh, in the remaining part of uh, the season, because there are four games to be played in Serie A still, but we are at minus one of Napoli. Guys, I tell you, already immediately if we are third or fourth I really don't care my dream after the disaster start was to be in that top four because it was really crucial so my happiness is about the ranking that Juventus is there am I proud of a Juve being fourth absolutely not am I relieved that Juventus is fourth this season with a disaster season absolutely yes Massimiliano Allegri yesterday said bisogna solo vincere il resto non conta nulla e Vlaovic era stanco we only need to win all the blah blah and the things that are surrounding Juventus at the moment are equal to zero not important at all important was to win for the people were, that were asking why did Vlaovic not start yesterday Massimiliano Allegri said he was tired because the guy was playing game in game out probably not used to play two games in a week something that he didn't do a lot with Fiorentina because they never played European Cups with him in the team Gigius Juve that's me yesterday what I said uh, uh, regarding also Massimiliano Allegri that said that it was important to win 
I reported a stat from Opta that said that Juventus for the first time since February 2019 was able to win four consecutive away games in Serie A. The last time that it happened was in February 19 with Massimiliano uh, Allegri. It didn't happen with a beautiful game of Sarri. It didn't happen with the rookie Pirlo. It happened again with Massimiliano Allegri. Beautiful game or not, this is a debate that we will speak about next season. But this season, facts are important. Points are important because we were running behind that top four guys we continue because before analyzing really what happened tactically we have to go with the starting lineup because yesterday a lot of players were not there injured long injuries like uh, Federico Chiesa for example one of the most important players of last season but also short news uh, injuries like a uh, delicht like a uh, quadrado and so on yesterday we played with a 4-4-2 with a defense that my friends uh, nobody of us were thinking to see in 21-22 we're speaking about De Ciglio, Alexandro as fullbacks Rugani and Bonucci as center backs four players that are always discussed Alexandro is probably the player that no one of us wants to see next season at Juventus he was a starter De Ciglio, that just w that will extend with Juventus is at max a, a rotation player, a bench player, yesterday he was a starter. Rugani, fifth man of the defense, he was there as a starter. If we are speaking about the midfield, Bernardeschi, out of contract at the end of the season, will not be renewed. He was a starter yesterday. Rabiot, that is doing a bit better in the last games. Rabiot is absolutely not the player that we want to see as a starter. Then Zakaria and Danilo. Danilo, that was, first of all, not at 100% in physical condition. And secondly, he was absolutely out of position playing as a midfielder is the future of Danilo as a midfielder absolutely not but that's how we had to play yesterday and then we go to Morata Morata that uh, ultimately is not even able to score versus the under 13 team and next to him uh, Dybala, Dybala ghost without motivation, thinking, thinking, overthinking and not able to play his game. Luckily, yesterday he was able to score that 1-1, that equalizer before going to the locker room, but uh, eh, not a lot much more. Guys, Niente de Ligt, de Ligt, why was he absent? Because he was not even able to finish the training, the last training before the game. He was not feeling 100%. He will be back versus Venezia. Quadrado will not be back versus Venezia. We are hoping to see him versus Genoa. If not versus Genoa, it will be in the Coppa Italia final. We continue, my friends, now with a deep diving in the tactical uh, information and details of the game. Yesterday, you see the average positions that we played with the starting 11. You see that Juventus was attacking a lot on the right side of the field with the players that were actually compact there on top. Probably too much players there. Bernardeschi at the same level as De Ciglio and Zakaria with Dybala a bit more on top. Yesterday was a disaster because you see a, uh, a Juventus that was absolutely not organized. Look at that. Right side totally up, left side totally down. A disaster because yesterday the team didn't work as a total. We can blame some players, of course we can, but the team was not working and that was one of the major problems, my friends. Yesterday we see now the attacking curse Juventus as many times this season. They are opting to go on one side only and it's the right side with Quadrado or without Quadrado. Juventus is not able to have some variation in their game they have no creativity no ideas 24 percent on the left 30 percent centrally and then 45 or 46 percent on the right side while you see a sassuolo that is uh, going in every single position on the left on the middle and on the right side of the field the same thing as what fiorentina was doing so you see that these trainers italiano or dionisi they really implemented their vision of football with the players that they have players that are part of that big puzzle that they are uh, building they are playing really well Juventus was not able to do that yesterday and also for the remaining part of the uh, for the previous part of the season Dybala I said in the previous video that he would be the key of uh, yesterday's game because we were missing Quadrado because we were missing a midfield we needed a key a link between the striker that was Morata and the creativity that was not there like Quadrado yesterday he flopped uh, Tutto Sport is saying 
Dybala il gol e basta Dybala the goal and that was it because for the rest uh, of the minutes that he played yesterday he was a ghost totally you can see his heat map yesterday totally absent really 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 crazy how Dybala flopped yesterday how Dybala is maybe already out of Juventus even if his body is still there the mind is already somewhere else where I don't know but that will be really, really important if we can recuperate for the last five games of the season Dybala that could be crucial for Juventus if we want to win that Coppa Italia final luckily all the teams that were behind us they lost and we are a bit more secure of the top of the top four but pay attention speaking about these kind of number 10 players yesterday another player 22 years Raspadori that is linked constantly with Juventus hey Tutto Sport is asking è piaciuto Raspadori did you like Raspadori did you love how Raspadori played look at his heat map he played in the position that we were all dreaming that Paolo Dybala was able to do at Juventus that real number 10 position and also playing constantly offensively yesterday he scored a really beautiful goal but yesterday he was constantly dangerous a really great Raspadori yesterday they played on the left on the right in the middle he was able to do everything then we have to speak also about another player that I told you that I felt in love of yesterday it was Fratesi Fratesi that convinced a lot also to the sport he's speaking about him is the one that went on goal on target a lot of time look at his heat map he played as a real box to box in a 4-2-3-1 he was able to play as a real box to box he was the one that saved one of the shots of Paolo Dybala on the line when Consigli was beaten he was the one that was nearly able to score a goal with a header and what a beautiful moment there when you see a Raspadori jumping taking actually the elevation and able to take the header he was their conclusion from inside the box outside of the box he was everywhere on the field yesterday guys when we were seeing all the the, the papers reporting the name of Fratesi we were a bit more Cold. we were not expecting a lot we would prefer a Milinkovic Savic that is linked to Manchester United unfortunately because they are all in on the player but we were dreaming about Sergei Milinkovic Savic Pogba and so on yesterday Fratesi convinced me that he could do something beautiful at Juventus even if he's really strong speaking about our midfielders because we spoke about Fratesi about our midfielders Danilo that was not at 100% yesterday we can clearly see in the heat map that he played the security remaining in the center of the midfield trying to block uh, especially Maxi Lopez and so on that would come back pay attention there but he was not able to run he was not able to do really great things and that's also why maybe the performance of Zakaria was a bit uh, strange because we didn't see the Zakaria of the last games uh, penetrating the field going up and so on why because he was also defending and helping his teammates Danilo so a big 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 crucial game for Zakaria that sacrificed a lot to help Danilo guys I just want to add something before going into the individual ratings of the players for me the one that actually helped the team to win was a beautiful move of Allegri you will not see people writing and speaking about that on social media because it's not trendy but yesterday we saw an unorganized Juventus as we saw with uh, uh, the average position but yesterday with the change of putting Chiellini in Chiellini instead of Rugani Chiellini started to play a bit more higher higher with the defense so that actually compacted a bit more the team and Allegri asked to Zakaria to to step up not going forward but going lower a bit on the midfield to give a bit of that protection to Danilo and so that the team instead of going really low on the left and really high on the right side of the field started to be a bit more compact and that's where Allegri won the game yesterday after a really horrible first half I know it's not trendy but this is how we won yesterday and then the magic the magic of Moisken Moisken that the papers are seeing as the man of the match il migliore the best with a six 5 on Gazzetta dello Sport the worst one Alexandro with a 5 and Tuto Sport is going actually with the same MVP Moiskin that was the best yesterday with a 7 crazy because Moiskin according to me he was a disaster from the moment that he started until the goal and then Rabiot the worst of the field Rabiot was really invisible yesterday and he missed a lot was absolutely not precise you know how crazy I go from the moment that we are speaking about pass accuracy guys I just want to tell you that for me Moiskin it's not because he scored the winning goal that he was MVP I think we have to say thank you to uh, Chesney that yesterday saved also a lot of time Juventus was there a real 
real MVP yesterday? Not really. Not really because all the players really played bad. La Juve insegna. Juve is learning something to the people, but also to Moisken. Non si molla mai. We never give up. Fino alla fine. That's the message that Moisken said yesterday at the microphones after the game, in post-game. And he's also already thinking about Inter. Also versus Inter. We will not give up and we will try to win that trophy. Fino alla fine. Beautiful message from him. Pay attention. Yesterday, Chiellini said, look at the reaction. You Juventus had we didn't give up we went for it fino alla fine even if we were conscious that we played a really bad game but we are preparing ourselves for the Scudetto of next year pay attention write that down 26th of April 2022 I tell you that Juventus can and will fight for the Scudetto not in 10 years but already next year speaking about the front pages my friends I told you that it would be a longer video so maximum of likes subscribe on the video we continue with Corriere dello Sport il gran premio di Milano the big trophy will be played in Milan because Napoli totally collapsed yesterday because Inter and that will play tomorrow versus Bologna is able to go at 75 at the moment they have 72 with 74 points for Milan it will be a coast to coast until the end and they are speaking a bit about the remontada of Juventus for the third spot is that third spot possible yes or no I firstly I repeat you I don't care third or fourth I don't care as long as we are in Champions League but Napoli is collapsing is it something that I warned you about in this season, about the beautiful magic Napoli that was doing 10 victories in a row in the start of the season, did I warn you that, uh, unfortunately for them, not for us, because I don't care about Napoli, that they would collapse with a trainer like Spalletti, with a team as uh, Napoli, the, the, the most disaster combo ever Napoli that is always bottling the the important games and Spalletti that from the moment that there is a negative wave wave he is collapsing as well and he's entering that depression looking at the ground eh, it's not my fault my friends it is what it is we continue with Gazzetta dello Sport because you know that Gazzetta dello Sport on the 20th of April so uh, five days ago, they said and they promised to everyone on social media that they would never speak again about the referee's decision until the end of the season. It was after Coppa Italia games of uh, Milan Inter, they decided they will never do that again this season. They will start again next season. So let's see if Gazzetta dello Sport, they uh, kept their promise or not, because on the front page, I have to admit that, uh, of course, yes, they kept their promise. They are speaking about uh, Milan, about the new owners, that will come there that will put a maximum of money they are speaking about that they are speaking also about Juventus that is gaining position that are at minus one of Napoli and then inside double page about uh, Sassuolo Juve yesterday that the 2000 players so because Raspadori is uh, born after the year 2000 uh, Moisken is from the year 2000 they are speaking about that because Signora Duemila see, the, the old lady that they actually is becoming the old lady from the year 2000 because Raspadori is a target of Juventus so until there you're saying okay they are not speaking about the referees but if you are looking if you are looking in that square in that red square that I didn't put because they have put that red square to show actually a red card to Sassuolo guys you have to be really really close to understand that they are speaking about a 95th minute red card from Kyriakopoulos but when I'm watching the first page when I don't take the time to read I'm thinking that Juventus won yesterday because of really strange red cards to Sassuolo what was absolutely not the case okay maybe I'm exaggerating so let's go to the other double page that they are putting speaking about Sassuolo Juve so Juve that is watching and seeing the third spot but then they are putting here uh, a bit of controversy in really small really small you have to go you have to go into detail so let's go and make it a bit bigger let's zoom in it they are saying Morata is doing a foul on Kyriakopoulos there are some doubts on the goal of Dybala <laughs> La Moviola V-E-R the, actually they are watching they are saying that it is doubt the goal of Dybala that 1-1 one -one is in doubt they are speaking about the referees my friend and not only that because they are putting it also on Twitter saying the same things there are doubts on the goal of uh, Morata showing actually uh, Morata that is actually with Kyriakopoulos disaster five days they didn't speak about Inter they didn't speak about Milan they didn't speak about Lazio whatever these kind of goals tonali that pushed uh, the Acerbi and so on no they waited for Juve the next game of Juve that was playing even if yesterday we won 2-1 
one and there was not a, an absolutely no problem, they decided to speak about the referees. Five days, five days, five days. Would would it be? Were you doubting about it? Not me. Absolutely not. I was hoping maybe that they would have wait one or two games. No, they couldn't. It's stronger than them, my friends. And now we finish with the last part, Mercato. Guys, I really have a great news, but probably also a bad news. It's Frankie De Jong. Divorcio alla vista. There are diver. Uh, there is a divorce between De Jong and Barcelona. You know that uh, De Jong was substituted the last time in Barcelona. He was absolutely not happy. He didn't go on the bench, but immediately into the locker room. He wants to be sold. He's, he stopped. He doesn't want to play at Barcelona anymore. Man uh, Barcelona already put a price tag 70 or 75 million euro. And that's probably the bad news because a lot of teams are looking for him. We go to Pueblo Juve that said Frankie De Jong no está feliz en el Barcelona. Frankie De Jong is not happy at uh, Barcelona en causa de los pocos minutos de juego que está recibiendo because of the lack of minutes of playtime that is receiving Manchester United and Bayern Munich are in pole position for the Dutch player. We know that Manchester United, they will have Ten Hag next season. That was his coach at Ajax. They speak the same language. That can be an opportunity, especially if they go in Champions League, what is really difficult, but pay attention to them. They have the money to do it. Otherwise, Bayern Munich is also on them. There are still Manchester City, Paris Saint-Germain and Juventus interested on the player, but I don't believe that he will come. One that might come more and more, I already make the video about it, it's Di Maria. There is actually a challenge, uh, a battle between Di Maria or Zagnolo. And at the moment, Juventus, apparently, they were in intensive contact with his entourage. They already made a proposal for a one year, maybe a one plus one for Di Maria. Salary is not a problem for Di Maria at Juventus. He can bring that experience at Juventus, can be the player that will be temporary there to give a bit of dimension offensively to Juve without spending any single euro. Dybala that is leaving for free and Di Maria entering also for free. We know that we will have a limited budget, something that we want to do something great with because we have a lot of position to change. Left back, someone in the midfield, maybe even a centre back if Chiellini decide to leave like he actually said a bit yesterday. Eh, pay attention. Saving that money to invest big in the midfield would be fantastic. Fantastic, fantastic, my friends. And Zagnolo, eh, Zagnolo, if uh, Roma continue to ask uh, 50, 60, 70 million, probably will stay a few more years at the Roma. Guys, this was it for the video that uh, of today. I told you it would be a long video. I was not expecting even 20, 22 minutes. If you are still there, say hello. Say me, give me a cuckoo. I want to know if you're still there, my friends. Tonight, Champions League, Manchester City, Real Madrid. I will watch it closely and probably we will see each other after that game. Grazie, forza. Juve.